Right, so in this video, we're going to go over how to place a uh, ultrasound guided peripheral IV. And these are the materials that you're going to need. So the first thing we have here is a tegaderm. And this is to uh, put over the ultrasound probe in order to keep a semi-sterile technique. This is a tourniquet. We're going to have one small chloroprep. This is a surgery loop, so this is sterile jelly. This is your IV catheter, and if you can see over here, this is a 20 gauge IV. Um, you can use larger gauges such as 18 gauge as well, depending on the diameter of the vein. Uh, however, what I found is the 20 gauge probably works the best, and it's usually the pink one. So you notice the pink one is for a 20 gauge, the green one is an 18 gauge. And nurses can help you get this too, but this is just an IV setup so that when you do get the line in, you can hook it up to uh, the IV setup in the tubing. And here's just a flush just to make sure that uh, the, the um, vein is easily flushable. So now we're going to use the tegaderm and place it over the probe. So this is a linear probe, and you always use a linear probe when you are doing peripheral IVs. So Here's a tegaderm we're using. It's just a small tegaderm. It's a rectangular tegaderm, okay? And we're going to open the tegaderm. In its entirety. And you can have someone else hold the probe like we're doing here and place it right in the center. Make sure you don't get any air bubbles on it. Try to pull it taut. over this. Okay. And now you have a semi-sterile ultrasound probe cover. If you want, you can also use your, your, your gloved hand to take out any air bubbles that might be where that um, between the tegaderm and the ultrasound probe. So the first step is you're going to place the tourniquet. So put the tourniquet underneath the patient and you're going to crisscross the tourniquet like this. Pull with your left hand the tourniquet up and then with your right hand hold the tourniquet at the cross section with your index finger and your thumb of your left hand and then tuck it underneath with your index finger of your right hand and let it go there. Okay. And when you want to release the tourniquet all you got to do is pull that and release the tourniquet. Okay. So once again we're going to pull with the left hand, okay, and then the right, crisscross it, pinch with your index finger and your thumb of your left hand, tuck it underneath with your right hand, and let go. Now I'll give you a good tourniquet. So after you place the tourniquet, you're going to use a chloroprep. So I'm using a small chloroprep here, okay. You're just going to break the seal. And this is with gloves, of course. Okay? And you're going to chloroprep the entire forearm. And the reason for prepping the entire forearm is that you are going to look for not just a deep brachial vein, but you're also going to be looking for the cephalic and the basilic vein. After you do the chloroprep, you're going to get some sterile jelly. And you're going to open that up. And you're going to place it along the antecubital fossa, and a little bit lower as well. So now you're going to use the ultrasound to scan for the actual vessel. So you're going to be in a uh, vascular setting. I have it on arterial here. You can use either arterial, or venous, or uh, vascular setting. So the indicator on the probe is going to be towards your left. And you're going to place the probe over the antecubital fossa. And here you can see, here's the artery, it's pulsating, and here's the vein right next to it. And you can scroll up and down to find where's the best part to cannulate that vein. You can also use color Doppler. And you can see that the artery is pulsating. The vein has such low flow that you can't actually see color Doppler on the vein itself. 
but you can tell that that's the artery. You can also compress, and you can see that the artery is pulsating, and the vein next to it, to the right, is not. If you want, you can also slide to the sides, either laterally or medially, to look for smaller veins. So here, you can look for the cephalic vein. So here is an example of a cephalic vein here. That's very superficial. However, you can still cannulate this vein um, and uh, in a setting of patient with lots of edema, you won't be able to see it on physical exam, but you'll be easily able to see it on the ultrasound. And if you move more medially, sometimes you can see a basilic vein. So here I see a basilic vein over here. It's also considered a peripheral vein. And you can also use this to cannulate. In general, I would try to avoid cannulating the deep brachial vein if you can, because that's where they place pick lines and midlines. And if you can get a, per, uh, a peripheral line in a basilic or cephalic, that would be the ideal. So now we're going to demonstrate how to cannulate the vessel with a phantom. And this is what you're going to be using during your session. So you're going to take out the IV, the 20 gauge, from its protective sheath. You're going to place a little bit of ultrasound gel on your probe. And you're going to place it on the phantom and you're going to identify a vessel that you want to use and the vessel you want to use is going to be right in the middle of the screen and here you're going to find it the middle and the middle corresponds to the indicator right here or the little marker that's right in the middle of the probe so you're going to place your probe center your vessel, and then put your IV right next to that marker on the probe, about two or three millimeters away, and start to go in. And you're going to see the needle tip. And you want to go in very slowly. This is a short axis approach. And you see I'm moving my ultrasound probe as I'm going in until I'm tenting the anterior portion. So now I'm tenting the anterior portion of the vessel right here. And as I come in further, now I see that I'm in the actual vein. And what you want to do is you want to slide your probe past the needle tip a little bit just to make sure you're not hitting the posterior wall of that vein. And then you can slide in your catheter afterwards. And in this video, we already showed you how to do the short axis. Now we're going to go over how to do the long axis approach. So to do the long axis approach, you still start out with a short axis and identify your vein. So here I see the vein in the center of the screen. I can use two hands. And while keeping that vein centered, you can rotate clockwise to get a long axis of that vein. So now I have a good long axis of that vein. And I can start keeping your left hand very still. You're going to go in and you're going to see it coming from the right side of the screen as you enter the vessel here. So you don't want to go through the posterior wall like I'm doing right here. You want to go just right here, right in the middle of that vessel before you thread the catheter in.